Okay, let's see here. Turn this on. Okay, can I get confirmation we are uh, live? And the way you can hear me. Sounds good, okay. Uh, oh goodness, it's very weird. I have a stream up here and it's on the delay is very odd looking. Um, okay. Um, so, today, uh, we're going to be trying out FreeCAD. Um, FreeCAD is a completely free open source software that's an alternative to Fusion 360, SolidWorks, um, what other softwares are in this category, in Autodesk Inventor, uh, and just a, a lot of other parametric, semi-parametric modelers. Um, it has a lot of functions that we're not going to mess with, uh, that I'm not familiar with. I, I know it can, has robot control um, and all kinds of odd, weird features that kind of were thrown in there. Uh, but we're, we're going to be trying to use it as if it was an alternative to something like Fusion. Um, so I thought what we'd start out with is a maker coin. Um, it's kind of a nice way to start out in any CAD software. I like messing with them. Um, this is an example of my personal maker coin design. Um, so they tend to be simple. They tend to be uh, somewhere between um, like this this general design and shape thickness is very common. Um, mine is twelve sided. The I believe the original maker coin design is ten sided, um, and it has my logo uh, in the middle. But uh, the the origin of the maker coin concept was the challenge coin. Now I don't have an actual challenge coin with me, but I do have a uh, so a challenge coin was originally a military creation. Uh, the idea is it being kind of like a not exactly a badge, but a uh, a token of respect given to someone by uh, generally like an officer. Uh, however, it's been co-opted multiple times by different kinds of groups. So as an example, uh, this is a challenge coin, uh, an actual one issued by 99% Invisible. Um, for anyone who pre-ordered their book, they got one of these. Um, and so you can see the size of the maker coin is comparable. Obviously, it's much thicker and a little, little sh uh, shorter or less round. Um, but you can kind of get an idea of how this design, like these large metal coins, uh, generally either enamel or uh, painted, would have transitioned into these. Um, I believe Maker's Muse, the YouTube channel Maker's Muse, was a major uh, player in the popularity of the Maker Coin design as it is. Uh, but it's now kind of become a, a little bit of a rite of passage in the Maker community, but also a uh, introduction to CAD. Making these is a it's an easy object. You can make it very unique. Um, and they're a lot of fun to mess with. So uh, I have up, I'm going to transition it on screen. Infusion, this is the maker coin uh, as I originally designed it. Um, so you can see it has some rounded uh, chamfers. It's got the logo in the center, which is actually geometrically constructed. Uh, if I hop into the sketch that uh, well, it's kind of hard to see because of the coloring, but it is actually constructed via geometry. Um, it just so happens my logo is complete as a completely geometric logo, so it happens to work out. Um, and most importantly, the sizes are the standard size, so it is 50 millimeters across, 10 millimeters tall. That's kind of the universal maker coin scale. Uh, this size. I'm not actually sure what the size of original challenge coins are. If I had to guess, I'm guessing they might be in an imperial measure because they are ever so slightly larger than the maker coin, uh, which is a metric coin. So if I had to guess, it might be that, uh, let's see, 50 would be, I guess, what, two inches across, um, maybe. But again, 3D printing community is metric, so the size of uh, 50 by 10 tends to be the pretty universal agreed size. Um, you can see this one has several other features involved in it. Um, so as far as curves and features like that. Um, and then that's rotated and there are 12 cuts. 
and these are just a 15 degree circle um, that cut is cut around over and over uh, so I can actually go back through the timeline here so you can see there's that original shape we start with the kind of disc with the uh, dip in the middle uh, bottom is flat uh, then uh, transition into cutting out that little nick in the one edge and copy that in my case 12 times the original is 10 and then uh, add the logo and then go through and do th fancy things like chamfers and what is unique to this coin um, the one I create regularly is the in on the internal uh, side if I bring up a section analysis here you can see there's actually a little slot in the middle and when I print these I tend to put an NFC token uh, so basically a, a tag that can be read by a phone wirelessly into that spot midway through printing and allows me to do things like load my contact information or a website link into the coin uh, without having anything physically visible on the surface so kind of just kind of a fun extra thing you can do lots of maker coins have uh, and it's becoming more common now to have your maker coin have some kind of gimmick to make it a little interesting so mine is NFC um, I know lots of people who will have like semi translucent areas or parts of their coin will be able to move or rotate um, so there's a lot of complex or it'll like snap together out of two pieces uh, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with these. Um, this one is the original design. There is a, uh, and I believe it is this one. Uh, there is another variant of it that I have printed before that actually does have the NFC or and NFC logo on the back. Um, just to signify that, uh, this requires a multi a multicolor capable printer. Um, so I'm not going to model this right now also because FreeCAD has a limitation with bodies in that it cannot just create bodies the same way the software can. Um, so we may attempt this at a later point once I'm more familiar with FreeCAD, but at the moment uh, creating a model like this would be pretty difficult in FreeCAD. So we're going to stick with the simple, just the one material design. Uh, so, I think we can go ahead and get started over in FreeCAD. Um, I've just created a new document. There's nothing in here. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, unlike Fusion, there is like uh, the background is not a rendered background. It's just a gradient. So you can see up in the top right corner, I am rotating here. And it's completely not visible that I'm rotating. Um, which is a little annoying because when you have nothing here, you can't see anything going on. But that's just how this starts. So, uh, kind of like Fusion, uh, where it has its toolbars, there are lots and lots of workspaces. Um, but when we're designing, we're going to primarily use part design. And then when we're creating the sketches, we'll be moving into the sketcher workspace. But the part design workspace has an area. So, first thing we have to do is create a body. And you can see now in our table, in our uh, tr feature tree, we have a body here now. And there is an origin, which if I, which is not visible at the moment. Um, anyway. Um, so we have a body we can work with. Uh, this is one of the big differences. Fusion creates bodies based on features. FreeCAD does not. Uh, FreeCAD, you must create the body first, which means that no feature can ever create or get rid of a body, um, at least within the feature itself. So whereas in Fusion, if I could take an object and I could cut it in half and it would become two objects, uh, here in FreeCAD, I'd have to create a new object or a duplicate of the object and then cut away half of each of those objects to create the same effect as cutting the object in half. Um, because an operation can't split an object in half, or at least that's my understanding so far. Um, you can see we have some uh, different operations here, but we need to create a sketch first. So I'm going to hit this button to open the uh, new sketch or the sketcher workspace. You can see our planes here. So this is the front, the X, XZ plane. Um, 
there's the X Y plane on the base, and then Y Z is a uh, is the right side. So I tend to start a maker coin uh, on the X Z plane. So I'm going to click the X Z plane. Hit OK. And now we are facing the X Z plane, and we are in the Sketcher workspace. So you can see our our toolbar has now snapped into Sketcher. Um, so everything we can do here is now in the sketching workspace. Um, some things to note if you are a Fusion user like I am or a SolidWorks user. Um, one thing is construction geometry does not function the same way. Uh, it is not a click box over in the side like in Fusion or an option when you draw a line like it is in SolidWorks. Um, you have to basically toggle between, you can see these are turning blue and white up in the toolbar. Uh, you can toggle between whether you are using a construction geometry, blue, or a normal geometry in white. Um, so you have to kind of know that ahead of time to a degree. Um, so I'm going to begin drawing the shapes that make up the maker coin. So uh, let's see. Uh, um, so start, there's always the, the line that's horizontal. Um, you can see when I get close to horizontal, it is creating that little uh, icon to say that it's going to be horizontal, which is nice. So when I click that, it snaps just a little. Uh, this program doesn't do a lot of work for you when it comes to snapping things to each other or doing an operation for you. Um, so unless you're very close and it's a very easy operation for it to understand, it probably isn't going to automatically do anything for you. Uh, or at least that's been my experience. So uh, I'm not super familiar with this, so I'm kind of just going to toggle through stuff occasionally, make sure I'm remembering where the things I'm looking for are. Uh, fill it. Okay, yeah. Um, so here we kind of have a choice. Uh, you can see in the uh, fusion area, so I'm, I'm working on this first sketch here. In Fusion, the way I created this was creating the bounding box as construction geometry, uh, followed by creating these shapes and kind of adding and getting rid of parts. So like this is a construction geometry circle. Um, while I could in theory do this over in FreeCAD, uh, I have a feeling that uh, it won't be a particularly elegant way to do it for FreeCAD, given uh, every Every bit of those features are a little more... Um, it's difficult using this software after getting used to Fusion. Hmm. I'd actually say that if I hadn't been using Fusion first, this software might be more difficult. And the reason I say that is because uh, I know the features I'm looking for by having used that software before. Um, I, I almost want to say it would be kind of like if it's with the difference between something like Photoshop and the GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, um, where GIMP has lots and lots of features, but they're not easy to see on the surface. A lot of them require you to have prior knowledge of their existence and what they do to make effective use of them. Uh, Photoshop's a little more friendly to a new user who doesn't know what they're doing, finding things and messing with them. A little... Uh, Photoshop is still not an easy program to just pick up. Um, but I would say that this software, due to its uh, limited constraints and its uh, the fact it doesn't automatically apply a lot of relationships or do a lot of things the intuitive way, uh, I'd say this is probably more... It's easier coming from Fusion, but I don't think it's easy coming from anything. Uh, it's... It's just a, it's a little uh, little rough around the edges <laughs> compared to the other CAD packages, which is, is reasonable. It's open source, um, and while it's had quite a bit of development time, as I understand it, it is still zero version. Uh, the current version is zero point one nine, and that's the beta. So it has not been released um, in the sense of it hasn't hit a one point oh marker yet. Uh, it's not even close to the 1.0 marker, depending on how you look at it. Although, most probably it wouldn't get all the way up to 0.99 before it uh, released as a 
very few softwares actually ever hit 0.99 before their 1.0 release. Uh, but uh, it is not at 1.0 or anywhere close. So this is still considered a... This is a beta of what's considered to be a in-development program. Um, so nothing is polished at this point. So I am going to try to create that same circle. So this is another thing you notice when I drew that. It didn't create a point on the edge. It didn't try to snap. Nothing like that happened. Um, that's kind of the general experience with this program is there's almost nothing that happens automatically. So if I move this point to right there, it looks like it's on there, like, but it's not actually attached here. Like I can still move it around. Um, same with if I move this right up to there, it's not attached in any way. Um, it really does not do things for you. <laughs> so uh, to attach it, I'm going to have to manually add the constraints. So as an example, in this case, it would be a tangent constraint between this and this that would actually snap them together like that. So now they're now it's held to that surface like we would kind of expect it to actually be. Um, so we can actually give this a dimension. We know how big we know this circle is supposed to be 10 around. So I'm going to click that and use the dimension tool which is Right, that's another thing. Uh, dimensions are now, in this program, are split up between length, uh, horizontal, vertical, uh, and I think there may be, yeah, there's actually more in the toolbar that are kind of hidden. Let me see if I can make one of these toolbars. I don't think I need this one. So I'm gonna scoop this one over to the end <laughs> uh, so we can get this whole toolbar here. So to actually constrain the circle, I need to create a dimension on the circle. You can see this is a radius dimension. Um, if I canceled that, I believe there is a diameter. Yep, there's a diameter constraint. And so we know the diameter of this is 10 millimeters. Um, so again, uh, a little less uh, friendly to a user. Uh, Fusion would have just had a single dimensioning tool and by clicking a circle it would have assumed I was dimensioning by diameter. Um, FreeCAD you gotta tell it, which, which is fine. Uh, it's actually a little nice in some ways that it doesn't do anything for you uh, because it means it won't mess up something for you. <laughs> uh, but it also means it won't, do any, it won't try to be uh, preemptively helpful like Fusion will. Um, so another thing, I do want to create a point on this circle, and I would like this point to be horizontally fixed compared to that point. So this is the outer boundary of the coin now. So I can dimension using the horizontal dimension from here to the very center. And we know that, uh, given the coin is 50 wide, this would be half of that, so 25. Um, I'm double checking. That looks shorter than I was expecting it to. No, I guess that's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Just looks a little weird. So, um, we can finish up the last bits of geometry here. Uh, again, I'm going to have to add some dimensions I didn't add in my previous one. So, uh, as an example, the previously I had used uh, relationships involving... Um, uh, I'm not sure what this constraint is attached to. Maybe the oh, its own line, I guess? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of that constraint. Yeah, okay. That, that's what it was. And I'm going to make this line vertical. So previously, I had used a midpoint of a midpoint to set the curve here. Um, what I'm going to do here is actually just put in the actual dimension. Um, Technically, it's not really different, um, but in this case, this would have been 7.5 tall. 
and we're getting close here. So I do need I need a, a arc that runs. Um, we'll do here. So we have an arc that runs. This is kind of the coins, uh, the nice little curve on the surface. So again, you can see it's not really snapping or moving. Uh, if, even if I put these right on top of each other, they don't snap together. So I have to manually tell it uh, that I want a yeah, coincident constraint from here to here. And I want a tangent from here to here. And in this case, I also want a an actual tangency relationship between this and this. So now you can see we're kind of getting that classic uh, kind of stuck to the surface uh, movement from this curve. And the last thing would be to make this. So I think we're gonna have to use construction geometry here. Uh, I'm gonna create a line that is a construction line just out to the side here. Again, it didn't snap, so I'm gonna to have to tell it that it's supposed to be a horizontal line. Uh, I'm gonna give it a length, even though it doesn't need one. Uh, it's not important how long it is, but we're gonna give it a length, just five. And I'm gonna set this and the curve tangent to each other, uh, which should yeah, create that nice little dip curve that we had in the fusion model right here. Oh, I was a good number. I mean, this could be, because I'm not actually using this as length, I'm just using it to define tangency. I mean, this could be one, this could be anything. It's, it's just uh, five looks nice in this case. Um, so we're almost there. We have two more things we have to do. We need to add the curve here and the little 30 degree mark here, which is actually optional. Um, I put a little line segment here at 30 degrees to prevent the extreme overhang at the very bottom of the coin. Makes it a little better for 3D printing. Um, so let's go ahead and add. So I'm gonna add a non-geometry arc from here. You can actually see it is snapping at this point and then I should be able to bring my curve over and put it about there. So we have our this segment of the curve. And then finally, we need a line from this to this. And then we just need to make sure our relationships are set. So we wanna create tangency between this line and this curve. So now as we move this, it remains tangent. And finally, we wanna set the angle here. And I've not actually done an angle constraint at this point. Um, let's see, I assume there's a way to do it. Yep, there it is. So fix the angle between two line segments. So here, here, and normally I'd prefer to dimension the opposite side, the 45 degrees, um, but I can't do that. So let's see if it'll let me do 90 plus 45. I don't know if this can solve math. It can solve math. <laughs> so 135, and with that, you can see that now we have over here in this little sidebar, we, it says fully constrained sketch, um, which means everything is fine. Uh, we wanna see that fully constrained sketch when we're done with any sketch. And you can see, and this is the other important thing, uh, Fusion is absolutely happy uh, with a sketch having extra geometry in it. So as an example, if this was not a construction line, you can see that we have a face here, a face here, and a face here, right? Just three faces. However, it will, ju it will just as happily use that as a thing because you can select them. When it comes to uh, FreeCAD, uh, you, you, for any feature to work, it absolutely must have a single continuous parameter. Um, Fusion kind of is willing to accept some error there. Uh, in my experience, FreeCAD is not willing to accept anything that is not perfect. So we have to have a single parameter. All our green line has to be connected and it has to be a single continuous parameter. So in theory, we're, we should be okay. 
So I'm going to hit close. I'm going to exit the Sketcher workspace. We can see our little shape here. And if we did everything right, we should be able to revolve this to make a body. So I'm going to go up to here to the revolve tool. And you can see it actually immediately understood what I was trying to do. Um, and created the full revolve 360 degrees uh, on the vertical sketch axis. So it kind of defaulted to the right thing. Um, if it hadn't defaulted to this axis, we could have selected a reference for the axis, but vertical axis was actually what we wanted. So I'm going to hit OK, and well, it worked. Uh, I'm not super happy about the little line there, even though I think it doesn't matter. Um, okay, it's not from the sketch. Um, let me try edit. So if I go more than, okay, I can't go more than 360. So you can see it kind of like that, there's that pie slice effect, um, or Pac-Man effect, I guess. <laughs> um, so I can go all the way up to 360, but it looks like it won't merge that into one shape. Um, there still is a, an edge here between the two. Um... I'm not sure if there's a way to not have that happen. Uh, I do not know of one. <laughs> so I'm going to assume that that's just how this program deals with it. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter in this case. I can still click all of my faces correctly. Um, it doesn't seem to be geometrically different. Um, one thing you can see here is you can actually see that this is not a perfect circle. It kind of looks like it's made of polygons. Um, that is how rendering engines tend to handle circles, is they split them up. So this isn't actually round technically, uh, but in theory, like uh, mathematically, the way it's generating this should be perfectly round. So I think we're okay here. We're just going to have a, a, a line through our surface. Um, I do not know if there is a... Yeah, I don't think there's a way to make that not happen. So let's move on to the little cuts in it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch, this time on the XY plane, so the, the ground plane, I guess you could say. OK. And so this is a, a difference, again, uh, to a degree. Um, I ha I'm going to have to pull in the geometry here using the tool. Um, so I'm going to toggle on construction geometry. And then there is a create an edge linked to X and external geometry and a copies of geometry from another sketch. Uh, I believe this is the tool we want. And nope, that's errors. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, so I think if I was to click this, yeah, that would work. Um, like that either. Uh, can I delete that? Nope. But um, let's see. Hmm. Not sure what it did there. Oh, there we go. So apparently sketches cannot are, uh, you can actually not see through sketches in this program. That's another big difference, I guess, then. Um, in Fusion, you would have been able to see your sketch through. Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to, I'm just checking if there's any way for me to grab this geometry or not. So I think because this is technically a tangent uh, that I'd need to grab on this object, I don't think there's a way for me to grab this uh, this geometry directly from the object. So what I'm going to have to do instead is hop back over into the modeling uh, and make my the previous sketch visible. So that's sketch one. I'm going to toggle the visibility. So you can see that sketch we made earlier again. I'm going to use the tool that says uh, grab geometry from another sketch. And I'm going to try to, if it'll let me, can I hide this body? 
let's see. I died then. Uh, nope, that, that didn't help. Uh, how do I make that come back? Undo? Nope. Hmm. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure out how to make that come back, because we're going to need it. Show hit knives. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that does sound a little suspicious, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so what I'm trying, what I'd like to do here is hide this physical. Um, can I hide that? No, that doesn't help. Um, hmm. So what I'd like to do is make this body not visible so that I can actually see uh, only this sketching geometry. Um, because as we're editing this sketch, uh, it still has that, in it. I don't know how that got back. Um, I would I would really like to just grab this piece of geometry right here. This little, remember we made a dot there. Um, it would be a lot nicer if I could just grab that piece of geometry um, with this uh, copy tool. But it doesn't seem like it's going to let me. Um, yeah, it's seeming like it's not going to let me grab that. So we're going to have to do something I don't like doing doing um, I am going to just uh, hiding it doesn't seem to do anything oh wait so hidden items well, but now you're not hidden Do that Do not hide item Hide item. Do not hide. Don't show hidden. Okay. <laughs> um, no, wait. That's not exactly what I want. I don't want to hide it. I want to make it not visible. Um, I'm not sure how to do. Uh, we'll just leave it visible. Um, so the main thing is in this sketch, uh, and this is, if I since I can't do this, this is kind of a bit of a problem, um, but we'll get around it for now, uh, is I can't grab this piece of geometry. Um, if I try to do the project tool into here, uh, it just won't let me grab anything here. Um, yeah, so it looks like it only can grab geometry from a perpendicular sketch, which is kind of limiting. So we can still do this. We're going to just draw in that piece of geometry um, by hand, but uh, that means that it won't change based on the size of this original dimension. Um, I believe I could fix that with a parameter, but that's a little bit of a workaround. So I might have to look up if there is a way to get around that later. Um, but we're going to go ahead and create a circle then. Construction geometry. Uh, and I'm going to try to move this circle around. I want to make sure I actually got it stuck where I want it. This is another thing that uh, I have already run into multiple times that is a... Uh, okay, so it isn't a test where I want. Um, this is, I would consider, a major problem. Uh, there is no way to reliably grab a piece of geometry in this program. Um, it's again, free software in development. I'm sure that they're working on this. Uh, but if I put this point right up next to this other point, I can't like, I can't get close and then like, so it, uh, I can demonstrate this in Fusion. If I was trying to grab this point and I just couldn't quite get close enough, I can hold down and it'll give me a list of things that are nearby so that I can grab exactly what I wanted. 
Um, it's not always perfect, but uh, it allows you to basically grab things that were a little harder to grab before. Um, at the moment, I have not found a comparable method in this program. So I've actually found that drawing things far away from where you want them is better, and then using a geometric relationship to move and lock them in place. Um, I'm also unable to select the origin right now, which is a little weird. Um, I'm not sure why that's the case. Yeah, it won't, it won't let me select the origin. Um, I guess I can do it via two restraints. That, that's very weird. Uh, so I'm going to do the uh, coincident online. So here, that, here. Uh, come on. Again, this is the whole thing of like, I'm trying to click a tiny thing that is only kind of visible. Hmm. Did, did that work? No, I missed. Okay, come on. Uh, yeah, I can't grab it anymore. Um, I think we're going to have to figure out a way to not have that happen. <laughs> Let's see. There, there must be a way to not have this be selectable. Just space bar? Do I just click and do... Oh. Oh, wish I knew that before. Okay. Well, that's a little easier now. <laughs> Looks like I can click it and hit space bar and it vanishes. Uh, so let's try this again. So what I am curious about now that I have a little bit more freedom to see what I'm doing. Uh, first thing I want to try is I want to still try and see if I can copy this geometry out of this sketch. It's looking like a no. Okay. So it can only grab geometry from the same sketch or from a sketch in the same plane. Um, which is definitely a bit of a limitation. Um, so I do have to still manually type in values for this other sketch, which is not optimal. Um, oops, I am flipped upside down. There we go. Uh, but we can deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this. Why is it not colored? There we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to lock this circle into position. So I want it right there. Um, preferably, I would be able to grab the origin, but it doesn't seem like it's letting me do that. Um, so, go and disappear that and bring this back. Okay, there we go. So we have our. So apparently, if there's any objects there, you can't see the origin. So now we have the origin, I can lock it on. And I'm going to go ahead and dimension this circle uh, via its diameter, that same 50 we had before. And on this circle, I'm going to make a circle right up at the top, which I, I mean, it, it won't actually be at the top because again, it doesn't uh, do that. I'm going to put a, a circle here. I'm going to vertically constrain the circle if I can grab the point in the middle. Uh, maybe not. Well, I want that point in the middle. Okay, so that's... Interesting. Okay, so I actually can't constrain this vertically in that way. I have to use a construction line. So apparently the vertical constraint can only be applied to a line. So I have to make this line segment vertical and then constrain this point to this point because I can't constrain it. Otherwise, I not want to do that. Here. Hmm. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, so apparently this is over defining it. Um, so I'm going to get rid of a constraint and where to go. Um, <laughs> it looks like the circle has vanished into the ether. Yep, okay. Um, don't know where that circle has gone. We'll just create a new one and hope that doesn't come back later and be a problem. So I'm going to try to create a circle there. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea where it went. I deleted the constraint, and it apparently got rid of the circle too. So, it's gone now. It's fine. We'll just we made a new one. <laughs> um, let me double check how big this. So, is it, right, it was a 15 degree segment. Uh, hmm. Let's see if I can figure out a way to make this work. So, what we want to do is we want to have a pieces of construction geometry that are points going to the intersection on this that are also connected to this other circle. So this here, this here. And our circle is either infinitely small or infinitely large. I don't know which one. I'm going to go with infinitely small. <laughs> um, and there's errors. Okay, let's let's figure out how we can not have that happen. I think I'm gonna get rid of this relationship, and I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, yeah, this seems okay. I'm gonna do intersection of here and here. Okay, I th I think I think it's not going to explode. That's a good sign. And so we should now be able to dimension this to 15 degrees. Okay, uh, fully constrained. I think we're good. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and close that. We have our circle. I'm gonna bring back the body we have. And what I'm hoping we can do is we can do a subtractive, so a whole, um, profile is, oh wait, no, okay, not that, we want this one. Uh, through all, first. Hey, there we go, okay, so we have a cut. <laughs> That's gonna look like a donut, doesn't it? Uh, so we have a hole, or it calls it a pocket, but it, I mean a hole. Uh, my, what I'm wondering here is, can we now do a pattern? So uh, normally this would be called a circular pattern. It calls it a polar pattern. We're gonna do a polar pattern of the pocket. Um, are there more things I'm missing here? Let's see. So I could, yeah, of the pattern. Um, other pi is in the same part from, I think that's okay. Um, oh, is this an additive only process? Oh, no, there we go. Okay. Um, so we want to make more of these. We want to make 12 of them. Hey, there we go. We got we got our 12 cuts. Uh, it's a little weird that doesn't do preview updates quickly, but I think that worked. Um, so if, if it kind of looks like I have like low frame rate or something and things aren't updating quickly, uh, that's just how this is. <laughs> um, now what this does show me though is that this is not a problem here, having this line here, because it got rid of it in that pocket like it should have. So I think that's fine. I don't think it's going to cause any issues. Um, so, okay, one thing I did notice is that I think I made this a 45 degree angle and it's, it's supposed to be a 30 degree angle. So I'm going to, let me see if I can hop back in the sketch and just change it here. So in theory, this would be 90 plus 60. Yeah, 150. Um, let's see if this works. If I update and close, 
Did it resolve? Uh, yeah, it did. Okay, so it looks like that works too. It's completely fine. Oh, I said save. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to save it on desktop. Uh, best not to have this crash at this point. Um, so, uh, we're getting there. Uh, that worked. What I am curious about now is can I chamfer it and make it look fancy? Uh, or sorry, fill it in this case. Select an edge, body, body, okay. Uh, what happens if I click this and do chamfer? Does it crash or, oh! So that is a feature that Fusion does not have. <laughs> um, but SolidWorks does. Oh, when you make the, uh, when did you make the other coin? Two no dimensions, better well memorized. Um, oh goodness, how long ago did I make that coin design? Two years, maybe more. About two years, I think. Um, it's, it's an old design. <laughs> and, and I've made and I've remade it many times as I've learned different softwares. Um, I think I originally made it in either Inventor or SolidWorks, and then I moved it to Fusion, and then I've remade it in a few other softwares since then, and now FreeCAD as well. Um, <laughs> uh, creating the logo in the center is going to be a fun time. Uh, because the logo has a lot of geometric dimensions. but So what's interesting here to me is that uh, it allowed me to do a face-based uh, uh, fillet. Um, in Fusion, to do that fillet here, you can see I have to actually select um, all of the individual lines um, like that. Um, and then I can add the one millimeter uh, radius to all of them to make them look nice. Uh, this is quite nice. I can actually just select the face in this program and it'll happily do it for me that way um, in, instead of requiring the uh, more, the, the longer term method of going around and selecting each individual curve I want to do it to. So I believe that I believe that's how SolidWorks also treats it. So it's not completely a unique feature, but that is very helpful. So yeah, so that is the generic coin shape. Um, we've made that now. Um, not sure if that curve is quite right, but it's pretty close. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, FreeCAD's had some weird things so far, but having that feature work is. Uh, a pleasant surprise. <laughs> so uh, I do want to check. I'm trying to remember if I have my. I'm gonna check it physically. Yeah. Okay. So this is the correct direction for the coin. Um, given it's 12 sided, uh, I have the bumps on the top, bottom, left, right, instead of having the I don't know, spikes or uh, teeth on those. It's uh, so this is the correct way. I have the little pockets up, left. Uh, down right. So, I guess we can try to make the logo. Um, so first thing I want to do here to make this is I, I don't want this to be... I, I want to make it on the top if I can. So I'm gonna I'm looking for something that allow me to create a sketch offset from a surface. Because if I do create sketch and click a plane, I don't think it allows me to, yeah, there's no way for me to offset that uh, plane. So what I want, what I prefer is to make like a construction plane, uh, if such a thing exists. It match, uh, map a sketch to a face, but this isn't a face that I can use in that way because it's curved. Um, hmm. Datum plane. Oh, datum plane. Uh, that sounds promising. Maybe. Pad. Subtract. Uh. Hmm.
Yeah, so I'm guessing I have to do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I can create a, I can create a datum plane like this. And if I set this to the X, uh, I think it would be the XY plane. XY? No? Um... Select reference one x x y no. So maybe I can't select planes when I'm creating a datum. Oh no, there we go. Okay, it, it actually did recognize that. Um, although I think that's the wrong plane. <laughs> I think I want x. I want this to be x y. Yeah, x y. No, no. Okay, it was x z. I'm I'm not used to this particular uh, layout. Select X. Okay. So I have that plane selected. What I would like to do is just move it up, which would be in the Z direction, I think, in this program. Yeah. So I can just move this up to negative ten. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So now we have a, a datum plane. Uh, so it, it, instead of calling it reference geometry, uh, it calls it a datum plane, but I, I'm assuming it's the exact same thing. So what I should be able to do is create a sketch on the datum plane. It's upside down. Um, let me figure out if I can uh, flip this plane over upside down because it would be nice if this was upside down. Uh, edit datum. Flip. Ah, okay, so I, now I can do 10, and I think it'll be okay. So now if I create a sketch on this surface, ah, yeah, now, now, I'm, now I'm on top instead of being on the bottom, which is what I want. So we have our surface here. Um, now we have to make that logo, which is going to be a lot of things. Um, now, something that's different here is, I believe, okay, let's do a test here. Uh, I need to figure this out. So if I draw two circles, uh, make sure they're in normal geometry. If I draw two circles, um, and I don't know, let's give it a, a wonky smiley face. Like, um, Just doing something here so that I can test this. Uh, I do not know if it's if you're allowed to use more than one uh, closed surface. So if I do this and close this out, so I have this this can I extrude it is what I'm curious about. So can I do this and do uh, negative? Negative, negative, nope, okay. Um, reversed. Oh, I can, okay. <laughs> so there we go, we've made our, uh, 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 the, not the maker coin we were going to, um, but we have made a coin uh, with a very wonky face. Um, let's see, does your coin flip well? Um, yes, but I don't know if it's technically a fair coin. Um, it's very close to a fair coin, uh, as in if I balance this coin uh, on its edge, um, technically, or kind of, it's very, very close to the actual, uh, like it stands almost straight up on that edge. Um, so it's at least weighted very close to the center. Uh, but just like anything that's 3D printed, it's kind of hard to guarantee it's a perfectly fair thing, given there's three-dimensional geometry on one side and internal three-dimensional geometry on the other side. Um, and you can do fun things with that. So like uh, all transitions, so you can see this a little closer. Uh, you can see that the back side of this one actually has the, the infill exposed, so you can see the hexagons on the inside um, with the, the logo on the front. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do messing around with them. I think I have somewhere the info goes all the way through as well. Um, but it's it's close enough where I wouldn't call it a weighted coin or like a um, 
it wouldn't be an unfair coin for a coin flip, but I also wouldn't consider it to be like a, I, I wouldn't use it for anything terribly important. Uh, <laughs> I have used it before as a coin flip coin um, for like, I think we at a robotics camp, we did that. Um, but, oh, okay, so let me, let me close that. I'm going to undo the pad feature we made. I'm gonna go back into that sketch. Okay, so that is something I wanted to find out. Um, looks like it's fine. Um, we are completely allowed to uh, have more than one uh, open area on our sketches. Um, it's angry at me, but it's fine. It'll, it'll stop being angry in a second. Okay. Um, so back to where we were. Uh, so trying to create this logo. Uh, I believe it is 15 on its length and one on its, is it one or one diagonal? So the geometry is, is set up in relationships um, and I can bring this up in the sketch here to show. Is so we have a length of 15 here, uh, the actual length here, um, but this little internal, this length here is also something that is, uh, oh, and there it goes. Um, this logo also had a has a tendency to explode um, if you touch it. <laughs> um, I think there's one geometric constraint that's slightly wrong here and it's being angry with me. Um, I think if I look into the parameters, oh, there are no user parameters here, so Okay, there we go, it exploded again. Um, I believe this is a unit of one, uh, or sorry, this is a unit of one, same as here, uh, which makes this six units. So yeah, this is tw one twelfth of the length of this, um, which is gonna be real weird because that's 15. Um, so let's see if I can figure out how to use parameters here because we're gonna need them. Um, given it's a pain to type a 12th or 15th. So, uh, let's see here. Mm, nothing there. There's a spreadsheet there, but I don't think that's what we want. Um, joke here. Uh, wait, about what? Uh, I, I think I've forgotten what I just said. Oh, exploding! Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm literally wearing a keep talking and nobody explodes T-shirt right now. Um, <laughs> I I end up coming back to it a lot. Apparently, it just seems to be something that pops back up again and again. Um, See if I can figure out a way to do this in the park. Uh, skirts. Well, we could just manually do it this time around. Um, and actually, I th I'm going to take a short break here just for a few minutes. Um, and I'll be back in a moment. I'm gonna, just going to get a drink uh, and also probably try to search up you know, the detail here I need. And I'll be back in around uh, probably about five minutes. So I'll see you in a bit, just a moment.
Okay, I think we're ready to get back started again. Uh, can I get confirmation videos back and audios back? Maybe. Not sure if we're back yet. Uh, gonna assume we're running again. Uh, I can at least see video, I don't know about audio, but I'm gonna assume it's working. Um, okay, so, um, learned a few things, not sure if we're going to use them here. Um, one thing I do need to test real quick is if I make a line, I want to see if I can make this construction. So can I right click it, um, turn it into construction, can I click this and do it? Ah, there we go. Okay, so I can convert something to construction geometry by clicking it and then clicking this button. It's good to know. So, what I think I'm going to try to do here is let's create that first basic shape, um, which is a diamond shape. Like so. Uh, not preferably not that wonky looking, but. And I think I'm going to have to do this via a line here. I do that and then set this as horizontal like that. There we go. And then this still isn't centered, which I can do that a few ways. Um, I'm going to do it by setting these two equal to each other. Uh, may have been a mistake. Um, <laughs> let's actually do that by... I guess we can do it by equals, but I'm going to have to set all four equal. In theory, this should make it... There we go. So now we have a uh, that shape. We can kind of squish it. Um, I know the angle here, so I'm going to go ahead and set one of them. So, because it is all uh, at 30 degree or 60 degree angles. I'm going to go ahead and set the internal angle here. Uh, which is upside down for some reason, but we'll set that to 60. So we have our uh, one of the shapes. What I am curious about is if I can expand this shape or not. Um, there is a tool for... I don't see one. Um, a lot of tools will have an offset operation, but I'm not seeing an offset in the toolbar. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing one. Although I guess it could be hidden in one of these areas. Uh... Yeah, no, okay, I don't see one, so we're just going to draw another one. Um, I'm going to draw it inside of this one, a little smaller. Um, I, I think that should be fine in this situation. I just want to make sure I'm still having everything snap into it, into every other piece. Like that. And what we should be able to do here is just set all of these, again, equal to each other. And then set... Uh, so that sort of... And, yep, so, and then set parallel. Oh, yep. So this and this parallel to each other. Uh, maybe not. Create a parallel constraint between two lines. Why, why are those not valid? Oh, wait. Um, hmm. This one. This one. Parallel. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, last thing is this should be half the size of this. So I haven't tried this, um, but in theory we can actually do things like that. So if I do a length dimension of this, because we know this is 15, um, I should be able to name this, and we're going to call this um, 12 units. Um, okay. 
Uh, that didn't change size though. This would be 15. There we go. Um, what I'm hoping I can do now is I can set this dimension here to be 12 units divided by 2. I don't know if that works. That clearly didn't work. Um, or maybe this is just a bad name. Well, now that's interesting. So this constraint has the name. Uh, let's call this uh, main length. So what I think might be happening here is, yeah, I don't think this is actually remembering uh, this is a formula editor. Um, that's fine. Uh, what I'm curious about, so it might be something more like uh, that. Uh, that's not solving. Um, I think it actually has to do with the feature name. So let me go out of here and remember what this feature is called. So it's sketch 002. So I think I can do, uh, let's see if this works. Sketch 002 dot uh, In length? No, it didn't work either. Um, hmm. Does the little help thing button do anything for us? Does not seem to. Uh, give me just a moment. I'm going to look up what the actual way to do this is. Uh, Okay, so I was actually pretty close then. It would be sketch 002 dot constraints and then this would be constraint, it would have been constraint 24. Divide by two. No, that didn't work. Uh, <laughs> I might just have to manually type in these numbers. It would be cool if I could make it all update fancy. But yeah, okay, I'm just going to start typing numbers. Oh no. It seems my camera has run out of battery somehow. Uh, we'll see if I can get it back, but otherwise we'll just keep going without it. Um, I use an old Android phone as a camera and it uh, sometimes just decides to die. It has a battery life of about half an hour at full charge at, this, at the moment. Uh, it's very old. So we'll just type this in manually. We'll just do 15 divided by 2. There we go. <laughs> and last thing we need, we need to do is I need to make a line with construction from here to the center point. I want to make sure this can't move. Okay, it can't move. And this should have a dimension of 15 divided by 12. There we go. So that's one third, roughly, of the logo. Um, although there are also those vertical lines that we're going to have to add. So uh, I'm going to save here just to make sure. Um, but then, what I want to try to do is make a rectangular pattern here, or sorry, a polar pattern, um, circular pattern. And I do not know how that is done in sketches. So I'm going to look around for that. Uh, let's see what these are. Uh, no, these are B splines. Okay, that's not it. Nope. Uh, 
may be that there isn't a feature for that. within sketches. It may be that that only is an option outside of them. Uh, I'm going to double check that real quick. It wouldn't be unheard of for that to be the case. Um, okay, yeah, there are. there is no uh, radial uh, sketch. So, um, what I'm going to do instead is we'll do this in two parts then. So I'll create this shape, uh, which is uh, fully constrained. Random question, but what does program let you change the color settings? I bet red and green is difficult to read if you're colorblind. Yes, you, that is a very good point. Um, in fact, I'd actually be curious how bad this would look on a colorblind viewer. I can actually bring one of those up, and I, because I'm actually legitimately curious now. Let's find out how bad it is. Um, in theory, I can wirelessly share. Um, or maybe not. So let me take a picture and bring it up. Because uh, I do have the ability to show colorblind. Uh, colors on the phone at least and yeah it's entirely impossible to tell uh, the difference between them um, it looks like that is the true for uh, oh no okay so in this context they actually it is actually okay um, the green is so bright compared to the red that they are distinctly recognizable. Um, so I guess in this case it might be okay. It's not as cl it's arguably not as clear, but it definitely isn't a case where um, it's going to lead to confusion like you can't tell them apart. Um, it's just that you don't have the significance of the color difference to the same degree. Um, so I guess in this case, it's probably would be considered fine. Um, I wonder if I can get into a perspective. No, okay. Yeah, so the red is always significantly darker than the green. So that's okay-ish. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to have to do this a little bit of the hard way. So I'm going to close that sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and do the extrude. Um, I'm also just going to hide that datum plane. So based on this sketch, I'm going to do a pad. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to only pad it five. So you can't actually see what this is doing because of the whole only one feature rule. Um, looks like the image of your face went away. Not sure if that's intentional. Yeah, uh, the so I use a phone as my camera. And apparently... Um, it being plugged into my computer can't charge it fast enough, so it has died. <laughs> um, I, I'm hoping it'll come back, like, after a few minutes, it'll charge enough to come back on. But it's currently just dying over and over of low battery, uh, so we will see if it's able to come back. Um, first time I've had that happen, normally it charges faster than it discharges, uh, but I guess running the camera might be too much for it. It's very old, and so it only holds a charge for like 30 minutes on a good day um, when it's not plugged in. So I guess maybe even when it's plugged in, it can't charge fast enough now. Um, we're back? Okay, we're, we're back for a little bit. It has 3%, so we'll see if it goes up or down from here. It might go down and just die again, but we'll see. It died. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay. Um, we'll try it again like 15 minutes and see if I can, if, it, if it'll survive after that. But uh, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to find a new way to give it a little extra power. Um, so we'll just have to operate without the camera for now. Um, so we have our, well, we have one of the three pieces. 
Um, what I'm hoping I can do is create a pattern with this piece, with just that pad. Create three. So we have our like three pieces, but it's missing the lines here if I'm gonna make my logo. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna to try to create sketches just here and just draw in that last line um, as a way to kind of kind of get it back. Uh, it's not very efficient, but it should work. Um, and actually, I should be able to just do it once and then reflect it over to the other side. So we'll just hopefully this won't be too bad. So we're gonna let's actually try that whole bringing pat. So like right now. If I draw a line here, it won't connect. So I wonder if because this is on this surface, and I don't remember, I think I clicked this one. Um, I might actually be able to use the part to geometry. Hey, this actually is selecting something. Oh, wait, it always selects something. Um, okay, let's make sure we have construction geometry turned on. And then let's see if it, nope, okay, that causes errors. Um, Maybe this and then just touching the edges. Ah, there we go. So I can at least bring in these edges, if nothing else. So that's helpful. Oh, they're not, they're not, uh, I'm not sure if they're marked as construction though. Uh, doesn't actually seem like it matters. So, let's see if I can draw in this last bit. Um, so the vertical lines aren't going to be that hard. I can I can go ahead and just draw the vertical lines in here, and it's actually going to snap that vertical for me, which is nice of it. So that's fine. Um, the problem is we need to set the width here, um, and again, unlike Fusion, this doesn't have a midpoint as an optional constraint. Um, or if it does, I have yet to find the existence of it. I do want to make sure that's, let me just make sure this is all connected. Ah, there we go, it's not. <laughs> so that's the wrong constraint for that. Uh, we want this constraint between here and, uh, come on. This, this, that. There we go. Um, by the way, if you're hearing repeated buzzing sounds, I'm not sure if they're as loud on mic as they are uh, here. That is the phone that is the camera trying to turn on and failing and trying to turn on and failing over and over and over again. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Maybe I can, I'm just gonna hold the power button and force it to turn off properly. And uh, yeah, that that's kind of a problem. Um, I have to figure that out because it was, completely charged when we started the stream. Um, so that means it is charging, sl or, or it's uh, losing power faster than it's able to gain it when it's recording, which uh, is a bad sign for the health of this phone. Um, it's not that, not even that old. Uh, it's kind of sad when phones die, when they still are good. Everything's up the battery and on and it's still good. But uh, Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, I'm going to create a construction line, and I'm going to create one from here to here. Uh, if it'll let me. I'm going to create one from here to here. Yeah. And so now these are all bound to each other. And so what I should be able to do at this point is select this one, this one, and this one and set them all equal to each other like that and there we go fully constrained so now we have that middle piece um, so I'm going to close that I'm going to do that same operation I did before I'm going to do a pad um, and I'm going to switch the direction of it and I'm going to make it five um, it is a little annoying that you can't actually see what you're doing while you create one of these features uh, but I guess that's just kind of the limitation of the software. It also did not, it's leaving a line there, which is interesting. Um, because I don't think this line actually means anything. Like there's no, I, I'd assume at least there's no face here. Yeah, you see, so 
if this was entire, if this line was real, like there was a gap there, even if it was like microscopic, uh, if I click this surface, I would expect it to also select the other one because they'd be the same face. So it, it clearly, it's clearly there is a face here. It's just added a line, um, very much like this line here. This line doesn't mean anything. Same with this little spot there. There's no hole. It's just that uh, it has added a line there. So. Uh, I guess we can do that, and now we should, I haven't used this, but in theory, I think we can reflect this. So if I do mirror that pad, and then mirror it across this plane, yeah, there we go, we got our, our other side, okay. So I think we've, uh, I mean, it took an hour and a half, which is a whole lot longer than usual, but, uh, <laughs> it looks like it has we've been able to rec recreate it in uh, FreeCAD um, which is cool because that means that this is now in a software that's entirely open source um, now what I am curious about here is can I export this for like for how a 3D printer would use it or can I render it because both of those are cool things to do so there's a whole lot of workspaces here I see one of them is called ray tracing uh, that sounds promising if I want to make something look fancy. So I'm going to go into that. <laughs> I have no idea what this is, so I'm going to start looking at what things are called. Um, insert new point of view ray project into document. Uh, looks like there's a lot of different, I guess, different ways to render something. New part, insert... Uh, assess the camera to match the current view. Export ray tracing file. Renders the current ray tracing project with an external renderer. Um, I'm not. Okay, so there has to be a ray tracing project in the thing. So I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide this feature tree. We have our body here. Um, I don't know how you set appearances I guess it's probably an oh there we go appearance so we can actually ah so we can see the wireframe so that's where those lines are coming from they're part of the wireframe you shaded there we go so you can see there those lines don't really exist um, they're just they're just added to make it look nice um, we can change the shape color Oh, we have to select the shape. Uh, shape color. You could like make it blue or red. We'll go with red. Uh, make it like a pink. Right, so we're gonna do that. Might as well make it purple. I like purple. Like somewhere around, around there. Looks nice. Um, I can bring back those lines, flat lines. Um, also looks like it will let us select materials so we have like we can do emerald it's kind of shiny i guess um or uh, neon <laughs> metalized it's very dark uh obsidian plastic stone Shiny neon, shiny plastic. I guess there's two different. So I guess these are meant to be like neon tubes or something like that. Kind of interesting looking. Like they have a different color depending on how you look at them. Um, although I'm not sure if it's actually caring about the color. If I change the. Oh, it does kind of change the color. That's cool. So if I set this to like in the purple range, kind of makes that like bluish green instead interesting so I wonder if this affects the so if I create a new ray tracing in the document uh, you're not the perspective for the best resulting in POV image different perspective do you want to continue yes so if I'm I have a POV project I'm gonna move the camera to maybe like right here I'm going to click this button that says, uh, where is it? 
sets the POV camera to match current view. So that seems promising. Uh, I'll just export to POV file. Um, huh, I don't know how this works then. There's a POV project, but I don't know how you actually hit render on it. Looks like it just has basically a camera location in it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know what this does then. You create one of these? What does this do? Huh, I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> see if I can, I'm just going to search, see if there's a little bit in the documentation on it. Um, the, the documentation for FreeCAD is kind of hit and miss, uh, from what, in my experience so far with it. Um, let's see. Ah, okay, so if there is no rendering engine installed, it doesn't do anything. So I'll, I'll have to look into that and I guess get a rendering engine later on. Because um, right now I can export them, but it will not do anything. So I guess we're, we'll have to not render right now. <laughs> um, but we might be able to do those, at least export it. So I, I'm, I'm a little curious about this. Can I just export as a mesh as is? Let's see here. Mark to recompute, recompile name. Uh, let's head back over into a workspace that's more suitable. Um, let's try part design, I guess. Back to where we were before. And uh, we'll set this just to be uh, go with alum. Oh, that's very dark aluminum. <laughs> so got bronze and copper. They're fun. This is a good default though. We'll make it a little bit purple. Okay. So I guess I can just close that. So we have our, our body here, the object. Um, what I'm curious about is how we would go about exporting this if we wanted to 3D print from it. So I believe we can do the kind of standard method of uh, like file export. So if we do file export, please select the first object. Ah, okay. We have to select the object and then do file export. Go to desktop. So it looks like we can export meshes here. So if I do STL mesh, uh, we'll call it point we got an STL here see what the refinement looks like it looks pretty good um, not too wide open in this program though this isn't the one I normally use to view uh, I prefer 3d viewer <laughs> not they're much different but okay um, Actually, gotta change that real quick. Okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up the slicer, and let's see. Uh, yeah, no rendering. Um, it turns out that the way that the program works is you actually have to have a render engine built uh, set up separately. But that does mean we could probably use something like Blender if we wanted to. I might do that in a minute here. Let's just throw it in Blender and see, see if we can make something look nice. Um, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like this is 
if we slice this, yep, looks like it's the same thing as what we'd want. Um, let me change the setting to something a little better. And which time? So yeah, that looks like about what we'd expect. Um, I mean, that's obviously a little weird. So what I what I am curious about now is if I go grab the original one, the one the one I made a long time ago, is it any different? Um, so I'm grab it. see here I believe this is the original uh, well that's a good sign uh, okay so there is a slight difference it looks like when I remade my original I made a different height than this one interesting so there is a difference because of that um, but if I put them side by side and we slice <laughs> oh, that little bear holding the coin. So yeah, uh, for anyone who's not familiar, um, my printer is a Prusa Bear printer. It's a mod uh, made by Greg Sean. Um, and so I have my uh, printer bed have a, a little bear on it just for the fun of it. Um, but it's basically a Prusa Mark III printer, uh, just heavily modified. So that looks real similar. Um, oh, I know why it's that way. Okay. Yeah, so this is, yeah, I, I think we basically recreated it faithfully. Um, so I think we succeeded. <laughs> so let me see if I have Blender. Uh, I do have Blender. Uh, I am not a Blender person. Uh, there are other streams that you'll see on this uh, channel or uh, stream channel is that the right word for what a twitch i guess it is a twitch channel i think that's the right word um who know blender far better than i i am a new newbie at blender uh but that's not going to stop me from attempting to render it in blender because we have like 15 minutes left and uh not really enough time to start something new but definitely enough time to mess with something so i'm gonna try to make this work I think I can open this and then go desktop and that and import. Oh good, this is gigantic. Um, scale. It's going to scale. Nope, that's going to squish it. I want to scale all three. Uh, how do I universally scale? There we go. We've got our coin there. And I think that's enough where we could render it technically. Um, I guess I'd set up Eevee ahead of time. But if we go over to rendering, and I don't remember how you hit the button to make it go. Let's see if I can remember how you set up a render. Oh goodness, it's been, Blender keeps changing and I am not keeping up. Uh, and I never was good in the first place either, so that didn't help. Image. Nope. Nope. Where's the button? <laughs> yeah, use an EV. That's fine. I guess we use cycles. Um, I, there's a button to start rendering, and I do not remember what it is. Uh, render result. Yeah, that. Come on. Open images. Uh, this has been so long I've forgotten the way to just hit the button to make it go. Because it's not this button, that's the uh, play button. Let's see. Render. Render. F it's F12. That's what it is. <laughs> Knew there was a button I was forgetting. We got our fancy 
uh, just a white one. But uh, okay, we can make it a little bigger in the screen then. Uh, let's hop back over into layout. Make this a little bigger. Maybe like that. There's a button to view from the camera's perspective, but I do not remember again what it is. So we're just gonna hop back over to render, hit F12 again. Let's see what happens. That looks good. So let's give it some fun looking appearance then. Uh, which I think is, I can't remember if there's any, if I have any appearances built in or not. Uh, shade smooth. Oh, that looks weird. What happens if I do that and then hit render? Does it affect cycles? F12. Oh, now it looks smooth. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, I think I made it a little too big. Or I need to like lower it a little bit into the ground so it doesn't stick off the end. That kind of works. I just wouldn't want the we don't want these to be rendered smooth. We want those to be rendered hard. That's pretty good. Oh, I guess this might be an opportunity. Yeah, we we have a few minutes. Let's 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 mess with this. So there's a feature that was added to Prusa Slicer that I haven't messed a lot with. But th yeah, supposedly, we can actually export um, the sliced one. Like after it's been made into little paths like this and render it. So let's try that. So in theory, I think I can do export and then, yeah, toolpath says OBJ. I'm just going to put that on my desktop. And then I can open that in Blender. Uh, get rid of the original cube uh, and do file, import OBJ, that one, import. And we'll see if we crash it. <laughs> uh, that's a really big OBJ. Oh no, okay. Uh, is it humongous or is it tiny? It's it's way over there, okay. Um, it's it's just put it way over there for some reason. So let's move it back. Um, so rotate, do you hold shift? No, control, control. That's not helping. Um, how do I snap it? I think that's snapped. And then move to the middle. It's also really big, I think. Uh, why? Oh, right. My camera doesn't work the same way as in. Uh, ah. No. Okay. Whoa, goodness. Okay, not, not quite where I wanted that to be. And it's also gigantic. Um, just do a little bit of ro rotating, I guess about there oh goodness this is so weird compared to my normal so uh, blender uses I, I'm using a, a space mouse which is basically a 3d mouse and in this you control the camera using it I'm used to uh, all the other programs I use since it's all CAD software you control it differently <laughs> so I'm just gonna see scale oopsie Make it tiny. And then we'll see if we can move it over there. Oh, that's not where I put it. Uh, goodness. Where is it? There we go. There it is. Over there. Over there. Over there. It's probably still not where I wanted it. Okay, that's a lot closer, though. I think I'm kind of like in a weird perspective. Okay, so right there, and then right here, and then right here. I think it's in the right spot now. Or it's very close. Let, let's hit F12 and see what happens. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> I just get a single. So what it's doing now is we are rendering the paths uh, like in photorealistic in a photorealistic way. Um, what I am a little curious about is right now we're using cycles. Eevee is the new render engine that's supposedly really fast. So I'm gonna try hitting Eevee and see what just see what happens. So if I hit F12 with Eevee, uh, oh wow, that was real fast. It's not quite as fancy looking, but <laughs> so let me move let, let me move the camera a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Um, I'm actually just going to move the camera back. I think it's going to be a little easier than. Uh, let's see, are we closer? Rendering F12. Okay, now now it's now I need to move it up. So, camera up a bit. Render. Okay, li little little uh, right and a little no wait, little left and a little down. This is this is why I need to learn this program better. Uh, <laughs> little, little bit left, and a little bit down. F12. Okay, so it's, it's right. It's pretty much centered. So now I want to try this with the the fancy render the the ray tracing engine, the cycles workbench. And this is probably going to be what's going to happen for like the last few minutes of the stream is we'll just wait on this to render. Uh, because it's going to take... I have a pretty decent computer, but it's still going to take it a while. Uh, so it'll just steadily be revealed as the computer manages to get through it. <laughs> but it, yeah, I, I, I personally love this feature. I know they added it just kind of because they could, because they thought it would be fun. Um, but also, being able to photorealistically render the like theoretical perfect print is a really neat idea <laughs> oh we can zoom in that cool uh it's, it's not it's kind of it's not really that high quality though you can see like the little breaks where the the printer would start start and stop each line which is neat and obviously a, a normal printer wouldn't actually print all of these to be different colors that kind of would be Weird. <laughs> and Blender is also free and open source, so this this whole thing has been made entirely using free and open source software. It's pretty cool. Um, I personally really like. I, I love the idea of open source and try to contribute as much as I can. Uh, sadly, a lot of like fancy engineering software isn't really open source and isn't gonna be. <laughs> So seeing FreeCAD, Blender is probably is probably one of the most impressive open source projects I've ever seen. I mean, it's amazing, um, and I wish I knew more about it because it's super powerful. Like, just making this is awesome. <laughs> but FreeCAD being being able to at least create this coin is pretty impressive to me, and I'm definitely looking forward to working with it more in the future. Hopefully I, I can have a camera back soon. Let's see, what are we at battery-wise? Do we have any battery? Oh, it's turning on. <laughs> We're getting there. I think it's going to like almost, yeah, it's, it's about instantly fill up that area. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So I, I don't know if this is using my GPU or my CPU. I'm assuming it's actually using the CPU. Which is probably why it's not all that fast. Because um, I think that's what Cycles does. Um, let's see if we can get video back. We have like a few percent. Hey, we got video for the last few minutes here. Uh, are we done? It finished. So there we go. We have created a a uh, really fun looking image of our uh, coin as it would be printed uh, all using open source software um, that is that is fun looking I, I really wish that you could like zoom in but it just gets grainy 
Maybe, maybe if I ever figure out how to use Eevee properly, I'll be able to make, like, this kind of thing almost instantly. That looks real cool. So, uh, we got about five-ish minute more minutes. By the looks of it, maybe about ten. Uh, any questions or anything you want to, we want to revisit real quick? Because um, I, I don't think it really makes sense to start something new at this point, sadly. Uh, let's see. How would you make the slot using FreeCAD? Uh, the slot being, oh, the little opening inside the coin. Um, I could probably make that within the amount of time we have left. Um, so the way I'd do it would be, so we, we'd come back here. Uh, I'm going to create a new feature. Uh, or actually, I'll, I need to make create a datum first. So I want to create a datum plane, uh, which I think was this button, this button, this button. Uh, yes. Um, so we have the plane, and then right now it's on. It's on the. So we need to select reference one to be the uh, xz. Nope. X, xy. Xy plane. So not that. Uh, xy plane. Oh come on. Xy plane. There we go. And then we want to move it up a little bit. So flip, and then z direction. Yeah, I guess flip again. So it's like right in the middle of the coin, right? So five millimeters in. Create that surface there. And then create a sketch on this surface. And create a circle for... Uh, oh, right, I need to hide the thing. Which we now know how to do. We just click it and hit spacebar. <laughs> um, very good to know. Let me do that and then re-enter the sketch. I'm going to create a circle, which will be the little slot for the tag. Um, and this needs to be... So uh, 50 is the whole coin. This slot is normally half of the size, so 25. Um, and that's all we need. So it's fully constrained. So I can... Uh, oh, wait. This is a... Ref I need to switch this to be a real thing. Uh, so close. And then we can bring back this, go to here, and do a cut. And what this what this is doing right now is actually cutting a hole out the bottom. Um, but instead of cutting all the way out, so instead of cutting a hole all the way through, I'm just going to do it like a, a one millimeter cut. And I'll do it symmetric to plane. So uh, it's invisible, but it's making a cut in there. So now there's a cut inside of the actual, uh, I think we can show that by, uh, hmm. I don't know if there's a way to just do it using the tool here. Can I do a, nope, not there. Uh, I can make a cut to show it, but it would be nice if there's a way to do a standard, um, Oh, I guess we can do it by showing it as a wireframe. So if I go click the, the body and do appearance, um, this uh, appearance, then we can set this as a wireframe. You can see in there, there's that, that uh, hole we made right there. Um, I don't know if there's a way to, so I guess if I do shaded, and I turn the transparency down. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that slot in the middle there through the like weird glowy version. <laughs> so yeah, there, that's how I make the slot. Um, that's luckily a really easy part of the process is just making something like that at the end. Um, and I change that depending on what kind of tag I'm using. Normally I use like little stickers uh, that have the tag inside of them. I don't, I think I ran out. Uh, I made a batch of these a little while ago. Um, 
but they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Uh, whoopsie. Oh, it's now invisible. Um, okay, let me set the appearance back to something that's visible. There we go. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, so there we go. I think we made some good progress. So we created a coin uh, entirely in FreeCAD. Um, all geometrically constructed and uh, dimensions. So this is all accurate to the actual size and shape of the coin we have. And then we messed around in Blender and created an awesome looking uh, <laughs> uh, rendered version of the sliced version from uh, Prusa Slicer. And Prusa Slicer and Blender obviously are also open source software. So all this, this whole ecosystem is open source. <laughs> And yeah, I'm definitely going to have to mess with this a bit more. I, I like the way this looks, and I think that this might be a fun way to mess around and create some cool looking, uh, like, kind of like, kind of artistic renders of uh, 3D prints soon. So I, I think they actually have been improving this as well and making it work better with uh, Blender. Um, maybe one day it'll be built in. That'll be cool. Same with uh, FreeCAD. It would be kind of cool if it had, like, the Blender renderer built in at some point. Um, yeah, Blender render. <laughs> but, okay, I, I think this is an all right place to call it for tonight. We'll be in a minute or two early, but I think that's okay. Uh, any final questions or anything? Or I think we'll be calling for tonight in just a minute. So, uh, let's see. So, I think we're going to be calling it. Uh, Everyone have a good night. Uh, keep making stuff. I mean, we'll do our best to support you too. But uh, yeah, just just go go mess around with something. Uh, it doesn't have to be free cad. Just a lot of fun. Uh, create something on a whim. Spend a little time learning a new skill. So thanks for uh, following me through this, learning free cad, and uh, all you have a good night. See you.